Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another video for the Horse Heresy playlist. I don't know about you guys, but I for one have always wanted a Mark 1 Land Raider in my miniature collection. Unfortunately, these are rarer than hen's teeth. You can find one the odd time on eBay for in decent condition, but they do go for two, three, four hundred pounds. And I for one do not think that it's worth that for a miniature kit. Luckily for me, Games Workshop sent me out the brand new Land Raider Proteus kit um, to paint up for you guys on my channel. So a big thank you to Games Workshop for that. Which means I now get to paint up uh, a vehicle that I've wanted to paint it up for years. Slightly different, but I think it's similar enough that I will scratch that itch nicely. So I'm going to be painting it up in the Sons of Horus scheme. I'm going to be using some dry brushes, some washes, and maybe a little bit of cheeky pigment powder at the end to pull it all together. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. And here is the Land Raider Proteus all built, sprayed with Chaos Black. The uh, weapon systems and stuff are off to the side. I'll be painting them alongside the tank as we go along. Won't be showing you a lot of that on camera, but it'll be the same steps as we go along. So I will mention it when it is time. Uh, it's funny, I've never had a Land Raider in my hand and had it feel kind of small before, but because I did the Proteus, or sorry, the Land Raider Spartan recently, and that thing is an absolute monster. And I had it side by side whilst I was building it. Uh, this feels like it should be about rhino size, so I had to take out the rhino to tilt my brain back the right way. So we are going to be using the Lupercal Green base paint and we're going to be stippling it on using the Artist Opus um, dry brush series, the series D brushes. I'm not going to go into all the nitty gritties about how this technique works. If you want to know as much as I know about this technique and how these brushes work, I'll leave a link at the top of the screen now um, to another video where I paint the Rhino in the same color scheme and I go in depth in um, as much as I know about how these brushes work and how they could work for you. So right now I'm just going to use words and assume that you guys know what I mean. So like I said, stippling on the uh, Lupercal Green paint. It is the base paint for the Sons of Horror scheme. Um, and basically it gives the uh, armor panels a really nice kind of model effect. It doesn't give that really flat color, which is a thing that I disliked on tanks for many, many years. And now that I've switched over to doing this for painting my tanks, I am super, super happy. So here is the first color applied across the entire tank. I had to switch to a sm smaller dry brush to get in all the nooks and crannies on top, but that's an easy thing to do. Next, it's time to move on to the Sons of Horus Green, and we're going to do exactly the same technique, but just like dry brushing, we're going to kind of lighten up a little bit. We're going to hit a little bit less of the tank, um, just to leave some of that darker uh, green in the recesses and all the shadow parts of the model. And it is a bizarre technique to learn, and it's a, I'm sure for a lot of people at home who have never seen this before, they're looking at me going, what in the hell is this guy doing to this beautiful tank? And when I was first learning this skill, I thought exactly the same. What am I doing? I should have used a scrap bit of plastic to practice or something, but I didn't. I just went in on it. A big expensive model. Um, and I must say, I, I am always delighted with the results. So I hope you guys stick around to the end to learn uh, if I managed to pull this off or if I have ruined a beautiful new tank. <clears throat> but I think that the armor panel there looks pretty good already. We're starting to get to that Sons of Horror scheme. And in fact, the only thing I'm going to add to the actual color is I'm going to make Sons of Horror green with a bit of pallid witch flesh, just to give us a really kind of a highlight color. And using exactly the same big dry brush, I'm just going to hit the very, very edges. It's almost like an edge highlight, but with dry brushes, we're just going to catch those edges. As you can see, I'm really removing a lot of the paint. And then it's going to be kind of a selective directional dry brushing just kind of catch the edges of the tank all the sharp bits this will once again pull out all the detail in the stunning tank and that will be all the work we'll put into making the armor green look good we will be weathering and uh, chipping it and stuff later on but for now, that is the finished Sons of Horrors green color. I think it looks pretty good. I think we're moving in the right direction for sure. We're gonna move on to Iron Hand Steel now, and this is the base coat, all the metallic parts of the tank, which on this is quite a lot, cause uh, it's got so much tracks. So I think I got two links in before I decided that I could switch to a larger brush because of kind of how the tracks sit on the model. Pretty sure I can go around the whole thing without hitting anything else. So I did do that switch to actually a, a medium uh, flat dry brush and went around the whole tracks in about two seconds. It was it was a good call. 
but then I had to go back to a smaller brush for all of the smaller details. Something I've been debating with myself over the last while is the idea of what color tracks should actually be, because I've always painted them as if they were metal, but I think in real life now they're a kind of really, really hard like composite rubber. Am I wrong? If anyone knows in the comments what color tank tracks should be or what material they're actually made out of, is silver tank tracks ridiculous? Does it, is, does it just trigger some people who actually know a lot about tanks? And I would like to know because I'm not always sold on the big kind of silver tracks myself. I'd much rather kind of black weather tracks. Moved on to black for some of the details on the inner parts of the panel. So there's these uh, inner panels on the front and back. And we also went for the inner portion of the sponson. So that circle you can see on the screen there. We also blacked that out. And then there's these, uh, there's coverings for the exhaust fence at the back. We also hit those with black. Like I said, off camera, we have been doing uh, the other parts of this tank. So when we did the green, we did the green on the front of the gun shield for the turrets. When we did the black, we painted the casings of the guns. When we did the silver, we painted the barrels. We've been going through the entire process and I will show you those in a minute. Um, just so you can see what I've been doing. Here is the sponsons as they stand so far. As you can see, the gun shield matches the tank and the rest is just black and silver, quick and easy. And the Havoc launcher on the top is the green and silver. And then these are the LAS cannons that sit out of the front of the hull. So time to shade down all of the metallic areas on this tank, so all the silver. We're not gonna be touching the green, like I said, I'm happy with how that looks so far. This is a big messy stage, no oil all over these gigantic tracks. I honestly don't know a tank that has more kind of track surface than a vein blade. But usually tracks kind of feed into the holes. So you don't see them all around the top and stuff. Absolute beasts. So of course we gotta use a lot, a lot of nolan oil um, and get the whole thing shaded down, including the engine exhaust cover, vents, air vent cover things, whatever these bit is. I imagine the engine for the tank is directly underneath that. So maybe it's just an access hatch for the engine, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're gonna nolan oil all those parts. When they're dry, we're then gonna go back and tidy them up a little bit. So we're gonna use uh, back to the iron hand steel silver and just dry brush up all of the tracks. Um, and some of the metallic parts with that silver paint just to bring a little bit of life back into it. We don't want it to be that dirty null and oil color. We just want to add a little bit of shading to it. And this isn't even the end. We will be adding pigment powder at the end. And of course, this will go predominantly on the tracks as they are churning through the muck and getting dusty and dirty. And it does actually leave a really, really lovely effect across the tracks. So the fact that they're bright silver right now isn't too bad. I added the Sons of Horse transfers in the box. Then I grabbed a spare bit of case foam and I started the weathering process. So I just used two colors, black and silver. So black is the one you go a little bit heavier on. You're just gonna catch all of the edges, any of the flat panels, those kind of bits, and you're just gonna stipple it on, adding little black dots and chipping marks across the vehicle. It's kind of hard to see on camera here because of the mottled blue effect, but it does actually stand out a mile. And really add something to the paint job. This is a thing that in, in my army, at least, is currently trundling across. Um, the planes outside of the Imperial Palace trying to break its way in so it's getting shot constantly it's chipped bashed battered and here it is with the silver paint adding a little bit more texture and more detail to it being a lot more selective with this uh, more towards the front of the tank as this thing is driving towards the enemy and um, so obviously that's going to be the most chipped areas of the tank quick and easy step uh, it does really add something Hope you guys can already see how kind of neat and tidy the tank is looking. Uh, at the end, I will give you the option as to whether pigment powder and stuff is for you. I will show you the full tank completed just before I put on the powder. Some people like that look, nice and fresh and clean. They don't want to add the powder. I understand that entirely. Um, but I've started the project with the, uh, the powder now, so I kind of have to finish it off. Quick coat of fist on red on all of the Havoc uh, missiles. I've always painted the tips of missiles red or yellow, so these ones went red because it complements the, the blue a little bit more. I then glued in the uh, LAS cannons coming out of the hull. Like I said, these particular details are not kind of jam-packed with details, so they're just silver and black. You didn't see that, that didn't happen. They went in straight away, first go, no problem. Line them up correctly. Now it's time to glue on the Havoc Launcher. So touch a super glue around the edge of the cupola and then carefully stick it in, making sure that it is straight.
Beautiful. And then the last thing is, of course, to uh, just screw the sponsons into place. Quick and easy. Forgot to take the blue tack off that where it was attached to a painting handle. You also didn't see that, that didn't happen. Completely smooth editing, of course. No mistakes in this channel whatsoever. And like I said, adding in the last sponson and we have a finished Land Raider Proteus tank. I really like the result. I hope you guys do as well. And this is the bit where I was talking about, I think it looks stellar, but like I said, my army is all added kind of pigment powder to it. I, I'd imagine that there's so much dust and dirt and debris in the atmosphere of Terra right now that everything is just covered in dust and dirt. So I'm gonna add pigment powder onto the tank. I like adding it into like all of the kind of cracks and crevices where uh, dust and debris would build up. Um, obviously these things are gonna be driving fast, so it's gonna blow some of the dust off, but it will get stuck in, like I said, all the like corners and stuff. And, and of course it's gonna be uh, covered in the tracks, but it's not gonna be settled like the, the corners are. It's not gonna be like piles of it. So what I did with the tracks is, is I, instead of stabbing at it with the pigment, I brushed on the pigment um, over the tracks, which gave it a much more kind of wiped away look, which I think suits the kind of the track assembly a lot more. So here it is. I kind of brushed it on and then just blew it off. Next section, brushed it on, blew it off. And we're getting this really nice kind of driving through the desert look across the tracks. And I think it looks a hell of a lot nicer than the silver. But I'm gonna continue on the process now, adding the pigment powder um, to the tank. It always seems like you're putting on so much, but you do blow it off and kind of the majority of it kind of go, blows away. Which then leaves pigment all over your painting desk and you end up scrubbing it for 20 minutes afterwards. But anyway, so here's the tank finished completely, ready for the battlefield, fits in with my army perfectly. Land Raider Proteus, weathered, chipped, damaged, painted, transferred. What do you guys think? I really would like some honest feedback in the comments as to whether you like the powder and whether or not you think silver tracks are the way to go. This is gonna bring the another horse heresy on the channel to a close, but there are many, many more to come. So I hope you'll stick around to enjoy those as well. Okay guys, and there we have it. A Land Raider Proteus painted in the Sons of Horus scheme. As you've seen, it takes absolutely no time whatsoever to uh, to knock out this vehicle and get it on the tabletop. I'm super excited to get it into a battle report at some point soon. Still working out the details and getting some Sons of Horus battle reports on the channel for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. It really does help. It pushes the video out to more people um, and means that the channel grows even faster. If you have any questions about Land Raider Proteus, the Horse Heresy, or anything else to do with my channel, drop it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And if you would like to support the channel, the easiest uh, way you can do that is to hit that subscribe button if you're not already a member of the channel. Um, and of course, if you want to support me even further, there's links to things like my Patreon below. That will give you access to a private Discord server where you can chat to me on a daily basis about your hobby. And um, We also do cool uh, showcases and of course painting conditions in there as well. So thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.